BYD have begun rolling out building 1,000 kilowatt superchargers that can add f- more than 400 kilometers of range in a staggering five minutes. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. BYD has rolled out 1,000 kilowatt chargers. Now, unfortunately, so far, only in China. However, I have heard BYD has plans to roll them out outside of China. There will be a, a big challenge for them. It's going to be really difficult to do this, and I'll explain why in just a minute. In March this year, BYD announced its latest 1,000-volt platform, which is capable of 1,000 kilowatt charging, assuming you can find yourself a 1,000 kilowatt charger. That means you can add four, just over 400 kilometers of range, theoretically, in five minutes. The 1,000-volt architecture with 1,000 amps of charging current can add, well, it's designed to add two kilometers of range every single second, meaning it's actually not pretty similar to the speed of actually putting a petrol pump into your car and, you know, putting petrol into your, or gasoline into your car. Now, I should point out, though, it's not really a fair comparison because you can't do that at home, can you? You can't, um, you can't put gasoline in your car at home. At least 99.9% of the world can't do that anyway. So electric cars at this point in time obviously have a huge, huge advantage. So with the first few sites in China, I believe BYD have partnered with Sinopec, the largest oil company in China, and they're building them out. And the reason is because this is a big job, right? It's really difficult to find a site capable of 1,000 kilowatt charging or, or multiple 1,000 kilowatt chargers. So really, BYD probably need mega packs, Tesla mega packs, or maybe BYD have their own version of those, putting those in the ground, that would enable them to put out this kind of charging speed. At this point in time, though, there's only two models of BYD cars that can handle this. That's the Han L, the new version, and the Tang L. And both those vehicles have this new architecture. I believe the new architecture that will come to different cars within the next probably 12 months. And in line with that, that means I believe both of these cars have BOD's new version of the blade battery, which is the short blade battery. It's a different blade. It's about actually half the, the batteries, the battery blades themselves are about half the length of the existing BOD blade battery. And they kind of slot in besides each other taking up a similar amount of space, but they can actually charge much, much quicker because of the fact that they're essentially cut in half. So BYD's new Super E platform is the architecture that you you know you want in your BYD. If you, if you want, want to buy a new BYD, you kind of hope that you'll be able to in the next couple of years get this in your car in order to take advantage of this ability. Now, guys, I think it's worth also mentioning the fact that um, Sinopec, China's largest oil company, have predicted the, the demise of gasoline they're saying that demand for oil has it's already hit peak we've hit peak oil and we're on the way down they're saying that's thanks to the rise of renewable energy and electric cars particularly electric cars because of course china is so it's such a huge percentage of the world's global automotive industry that because of the fact in china 50 percent of all cars now being sold are electric there's demand for gasoline is beginning to go down it's a huge positive so what are the costs of these cars? Well, the Han L sedan, which is basically a luxury sedan, starts at around 58,000 Australian dollars uh, as per the driven.io. And that equates to probably about 38,000 US dollars, about the price of a Tesla Model 3, which is amazing. The Tang L, which is their large SUV, you can get that in either five or seven seat versions. That's around 75,000 Australian dollars. So that's around 48,000 US dollars. Really, for this kind of level of technology, the prices are truly staggering. To me, though, what's most interesting about all this is not so much how good these cars are. I mean, the cars are amazing, but there are other brands with, you know, 900 volt, 800 volt charging. I mean, Xpeng have 12 minute chargers, Zig have 10 minutes. So it's it's sort of like par the course now. But what's most intriguing to me is that this shows the future. 10 years from now, these are the kind of cars that we're all going to be driving. And we're going to have this ability to charge our cars incredibly quickly. And these superchargers will be rolled out. I mean, we know Xpeng are building superchargers outside of China. The competition, I've heard Zika are doing it as well. There's going to be, you know, 800 plus, 500 plus kilowatt chargers located, I wouldn't say everywhere, but there's really a lot of them. And I think anyone then at that point in time, well, anyone who was to say 
there's a big disadvantage having an electric car. We'll no longer be able to say that with a straight face. So this is the future of the electric car industry. And it's, it's really awesome, I think. Guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Tesla's biggest rival, without doubt. Whenever we think of, whenever we think of Tesla, we think of BYD. When we think of BYD, we think of Tesla, or at least I do anyway. Well, Tesla's biggest rival, BYD, they've just made a ton of profit. And it wasn't long ago that we were saying, especially Tesla YouTube channels were saying, Tesla is making so much more money than BYD on every car they sell. They're so much more profitable. BYD doesn't make a big profit, makes a minuscule profit. Boy, oh boy, how the tables have turned. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. BYD just posted profits three times larger than Tesla's last quarter. And keep in mind, Tesla's profit pretty much while entirely only came from the sales of carbon credits. BYD also rolled out 1,000 kilowatt car EV architectures, which are the fastest charging platform, the fastest charging batteries in the world, and they boosted sales by 60%. Are we watching the moment the world's biggest EV disruptor leaves Tesla in the dust? Well, let's break it down. Hey guys. Thank you for helping us to hit 300,000 subscribers. Really appreciate your support. It's been an incredible journey. If you want to check out my video about this journey over the last four years, I'll put a link in the description below. So here are the bottom lines. Net profit doubled year on year for BYD to 9.15 billion yen. That is 1.3 billion US dollars. You would think, considering the fact that BYD's cars are cheaper than ever. Many of them, the highest selling models, the price has gone down. For example, BYD Seagull price has been, it's dropped from about 11,000 to nearly, or just, just under 8,000 US dollars. BYD's cars have never been more affordable and yet profits are skyrocketing. Operating revenue is up 37% to 23.3 billion. Earnings per share up 99% to 3.12 yen. In the same quarter, Tesla's net income fell more than 70% to US 409 million. Yes, it's true, Tesla's going through a period of change with the new Model Y, but that can't account for this big difference between the two companies. Not entirely, anyway. Put bluntly, BYD earned $3 for every $1 that Tesla earned last quarter. How exactly did BYD do it? Well, it's true that Tesla is vertically integrated, but not to the degree BYD is. BYD makes its own batteries, all of them, every single one of them, and sells batteries to dozens of other manufacturers. It makes its own power electronics. It makes its semiconductor chips. It makes nearly everything going into its cars. Even the iPad screens, even the screens that go into its cars, it makes them. The lithium ion phosphate blade battery pack, that cuts material costs and improve safety? Well, BYD makes them at a fraction of the price of what it cost Tesla to make 4680 battery cells or to buy batteries from its uh, suppliers. 